Sometimes life can feel like a pressure cooker. From our work life to our personal lives and relationships, there's so much to balance. It's easy to feel weighed down when you're experiencing anxiety, stress, or sadness. But guess what? You're not alone. You may not know it now, but support is all around you. No matter where you are, all you need to do is ask. Let us help find you a community at churchescare.com. Churches are communities of care. Go to C-H-U-R-C-H-E-S care.com to explore the possibilities. There have been some uh, some shifting in the odds for the NFL draft and who's going to be taken number one overall. The Jags have been on the clock since the season wrapped up in January, and most of that time I think we assumed that they would either try and trade the pick, they would take one of these left tackles, or they would just draft Aiden Hutchinson. And I think as of recently, we settled on the Aiden Hutchinson portion of things. Well, it looks like none of those are going to happen. Georgia defensive end Trayvon Walker has gone from the long shot to be number one overall to the consensus odds-on favorite to be the number one overall pick on Thursday. Walker's odds went from plus 150 to minus 200 just over the course of the last 24 hours. Hutchinson fell from minus 170 to plus 160. So all the value has left the room when it comes to betting Trayvon Walker as the number one overall pick. Those that are in the know say that Trent Baalke is all in on Walker and here's what Mel Kuyper has to say about the prospect. Well, Trayvon Walker is enormously talented. He's gifted. I think about 6'5", 270, 275, running 4'5", long arms. Think about the vertical jump, 35 and a half. All the measurables you would want. You want to yeah, look at a guy and say, this is the prototype in terms of being a great player. It's a guy like Trayvon Walker. Now, the production didn't match the talent. He had nine and a half sacks career, 13 tackles for loss career. Joey Bose had 26 sacks in his career, 51 tackles for loss. Clowney, 24 sacks, 47 tackles for loss. Miles Garrett, 31 sacks, 47 tackles for loss. You go back, as I said, to Walker, 9.5 sacks, 13 tackles for loss. Can you take all that talent, L, and coach it up, put him in the right position, and now maximize all that talent and ability at the pro level against the best in the world? That's why, to me, is one of the more intriguing prospects in this draft. This sounds like an issue to me. Walker looks the part. Right. He performed as the part in the combine, but I am a big believer in college to pro production. That matters more than anything else. Were you able to do it against the best? And it's not like he's coming from some podunk school. He's coming from Georgia. And he's had some big games. He was really good in the national championship game, put up some big numbers uh, defensively, which, you know, sometimes that stuff doesn't always show up. But the, the nine sacks career. 13 tackles for loss. And you just heard Mel Kuyper compared to Joey yeah. Bosa. 26 sacks and 51 tackles for loss. This stuff is transferable to the NFL. Trayvon Walker sounds like a project. I don't get yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, drafting a project at one. You, I mean, you, there's a lot to like about his upside. Well, of course. That's why Plenty. he's projected to go. Yeah. Even if, if the Jags don't take him number one overall, how far would he slip? Five, six? We're still talking about a top... 10 pick in the NFL draft. So, of course, he has talent, but is he worthy of you have your pick of everyone, and that's the guy? That doesn't sound right. Right. Even Clowney had 24 sacks, and I felt like everybody was overrating that hit against Michigan. It was like he's the number one pick because of this one play. Oh, who did go crazy over that? He had 24 sacks himself, so at least have some form of numerical production. You'd like that. If I'm the Jags, I would just trade back if. No. You can't do it. Why not? You can't do it because nobody wants that pick. Yeah, no true. one's going to give you anything. They're going to trade back. So what? So that somebody else can. The guy you're trading up to get, there is a comparable player that you can get a couple of picks later. Kayvon Thibodeau. Aiden, well, Aiden, even Aiden Hutchinson. You can get these guys a couple of picks. Unless you're talking about somebody trading from all the way in the back. Just to get a player like that? I yeah, don't see anybody doing it. I guess it. quarterback's really the only position that teams will leapfrog seriously unless there's a Micah Parsons in the team, teams like last year. Or like a generational type of defensive player, somebody who just fits the scheme so perfectly, hand in glove. But none of these guys are that. I mean, I'm looking forward to all these guys. I think they can all play, and I think they can all be good pros, but... It's hard to pick one over the other, especially at one. I mean, the Jazz Jags had this huge off season where they signed a bunch of guys. So this extra, this first number one overall pick almost feels like a bonus. But I just worry about teams when they get in that situation where 
I, I don't know. They need to be able to get somebody legit here. And, I mean, I don't think he's going to be a bad player, but I'm almost sure that some of these other guys are going to end up having bigger numbers. And it also comes down to who do you trust? Who's making the decision? If it was a team that we believed in, if the Steelers had the number one pick and you heard that they were leaning towards Trayvon Walker, I think we would all start looking at Walker in a little bit of a different way. When you hear that it's the Jaguars, that it's Trent Baalke, I mean, the general manager. Trent Baalke did a decent job for the Niners when he was over there uh, as far as bringing some of those defensive players he had in. Some horrible, he had some horrible first-round picks. He, did, he wound up with guys like... Um, DeForest Buckner, he drafted. Who's good? But I, I went back and looked at a couple of his picks. He took Alden Smith in 2011. Alden Smith was a star for a little while. Four picks later, J.J. Watt went. Yeah, but Alden Smith was like the best pass rusher in the league for like three or four years. Until they had to release him. Yeah, but in those three years, he was great. Hmm. I don't trust. I don't trust Balky. And we're talking about a guy even just, you know, so that's 2011. You can learn a lot in ten years about your job. Uh, so whether or not he's great at it then... You can be better at it now. Last year, he's the general manager that had his name on Travis Etienne. Well, Urban Meyer made him do that, probably. <laughs> well, if your coach is making you make these decisions, Trent Balky probably shouldn't have the job that he yeah, has right, right now. You're right. Crazy. Tazi's State coming up around the corner, and then be, uh, we've got Bianchi's uh, weekend roundup. All of that still to come on a Monday edition of In the Zone. Hang with us.